All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's let's do this. Let's get started. It's a new week. God bless you. I hope you have a good week. I hope I have a good week. There we go. So today, I just wanted to do uh, a quick video about three uh, tweets that I saw, and we're gonna start with with a good one because I, you know, one of the things I like to do is to give credit where credit is due. That's one of my favorite things. Where credit is due, I want to give credit. And I'm going to give some credit here to Jackie Hill Perry. I saw a lot of people sharing this. And, uh, well, well, let me, I'm not going to watch the whole thing, but let's just let her talk. I'm going to say this and I'm going to get out your way. I was really skeptical and have been for some years when people were saying that the Enneagram was demonic. Okay, did you hear what she said? She said that the Enneagram, you know, that thing where people put their numbers and they say, well, this is my personality type and things like that. You know, a lot of us have been saying, you know, that's actually like literally witchcraft. It's like demonic. You know, it came from a, a person who talked to a demon, and then the demon told him about these, these numbers that tell you about your personality. It's like, you know, it's like actual witchcraft. A lot of us have been saying that. And, and the thing is, like, a lot of people, you know, you know, w would look at us and be like, oh, you're just being, you're being ridiculous. Oh, you're, you're, you're just a Pharisee, you know, and that kind of thing. You know, the same, the same thing with the critical race theory stuff and all that kind of thing. And, and, and that's just the, 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 the line, the official line. This is the Gospel Coalition line. Joe Carter wrote an article about it. And I, ha I, I, I want to do a video, uh, a, a podcast all about this Enneagram thing from Gospel Coalition. In fact, I had a guest lined up to talk about it. Uh, but he kind of he kind of went dark on me. But anyway, um, the official gospel coalition position it's nuanced. It's nuanced. Yeah, I know it certainly sounds like this man was talking to a demon and the demon gave him this enneagram. But you know, if you're not using it for demonic things, then maybe it's okay. That that's the position. It's the same. It's the same thing with critical race theory. You know, it's I I understand it's 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 evil, but. You know, if you use it as an analytical tool, I, I think they even use the same word, analytical tool. Uh, if you use the demonic doctrine as an analytical tool, it's okay. That's the Gospel Coalition position on the Enneagram. And so she, she, she she's saying, look, I'm Gospel Coalition. I was pretty skeptical. Look, there was a there's probably a bunch of white supremacists saying this. She didn't say that. I, I added that for a little fun. So she says, I was skeptical about those people who said that the Enneagram was demonic. Now, let's continue. Because I I do feel like sometimes people can be way too deep. But the Lord prompted me to study that thing for a good two days. Evil. <laughs> and it ain't even funny. It is like, funny. It is funny. Like it's that. legitimately doctrines of demons. Yes. Yeah. Divination, witchcraft. That's it. That that's it. Th that's true. And and she, she so she studied it for two days. She said the Lord prompted her to study it for two days, and I'm glad that the Lord did that. And she studied it for two days. Now you don't need to study the Enneagram for two days to understand that it is literally divination. It is literally uh, witchcraft. It is literally the doctrine of demons. That's what she said. It's literally those things. She said, I studied it for two days, and she laughed, and she's like, it's not even funny. And, and I understand where she's coming from, because when I saw that article from Joe Carter, I laughed, but it's like, this is actually not funny. This is a lot of people take the Gospel Coalition seriously still, and they're here telling us that, you know, that witchcraft thing? That's nuanced. Witchcraft is nuanced. You know, if you, if you use the witchcraft, you know, for evil purposes, well, okay, then that, that's bad. But if you use the witchcraft as an analytical tool, maybe it's okay to do some spells. That's what they're saying. And good for her. So she studied it for two days, and she put out a little video. This is evil, guys. This is, e this is, this is witchcraft. She, she didn't mince words. She didn't even use uh, uh, um, uh, euphemism. She said, this is demo the literal doctrine of demons. It doesn't get more literal than this. Divination, witchcraft, evil. Those are the words she used. Good for you, Jackie Hill Perry. I've got to give credit where cre hats off to you. Hats. See, I took my hat off. Hats off to you. That is some serious stuff, man. And and and, and I'm still gonna do a video about this Enneagram thing because you know I, it, it is so ridiculous. I gotta find a new guest to talk about it. It's, um, 
But man, un- unreal. But I, I, I did want to highlight this because you don't really see a lot of people uh, you know, kind of breaking ranks with Big Eva on something like this. There's no nuance here. It is witchcraft. And Jackie Hill Perry here is admitting that. And so good for her. Good for her. I saw this one from William Wolfe. And this is a, uh, a, a screenshot of Jamar Tisby where Jamar Tisby puts out uh, a tweet. He says he's going to be joining other faith leaders on January 6th for a solemn anniversary prayer vigil near the Capitol to commemorate the insurrection <laughs> and to stand against white Christian nationalism. Oh, this is funny. And so, and so William Wolf says it's a new pagan religion. They have their own original sin. They have their own high holy days and January 6th is one of them. And and that's true. They're never going to let January 6th go. They're going to do prayer vigils on Jan. It's a new holy day. There will be no new rituals. There will be new prayers. It'll be a point of piety. If you don't if you don't uh, get solemn on January 6th, then you're not a pious Christian. You're not a gospel-centered Christian. I I think January 6th uh for at least the the insurrection part of it. I I, I look at this as a new April Fools' Day. It's great. I mean, everyone who gets all serious, oh, our democracy was under threat. You know, they're 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 a fool. It's it's just that simple. If if you think that uh, the the democracy was teetering on the edge, and and that shaman guy, he was almost the speaker of the house, if you if you can believe it, and and if you don't even acknowledge the the glowing nature of the entire thing. The glowing nature of the entire thing and how they're doing a replay of it in Brazil. You're an idiot. You're, 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 I, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can confidently say that if you are going to the prayer vigil with Jamar Tisby on January 6th next year, you are in fact an idiot. It's just that simple. There was no, there, oh, we got to pray against white Christian, it almost, we almost were a white Christian nationalist nation, people. If it wasn't for those heroic... Who was the heroes of that? I don't know. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. I saw Kyle Howard say that, 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 that they almost decided to lynch everybody. They were almost going to lynch everybody when they got in there. And it's like, <laughs> you don't even know what to say about that kind of stuff. I'll, I'll never forget the, uh, the, the tweet that I, that I saw. This one, this one had me rolling for days. This is a picture, a, a real picture, and it, it went kind of viral. And, and all the major news order organizations were, were like lauding this Asian representative. Because at the time, you know, they were, they were standing with Asians because Asians were getting blamed for the China flu. And, um, and they captioned this. I, I'll never forget this. They captioned it, you know, representative so-and-so uh, uh, decides to clean up the wreckage, the wreckage at the Capitol. And the wreckage was some carefully placed Deer Park water bottles, empty Deer Park water bottles. This one looks like a vitamin water. And some of them are upright, some of them are on their side, and he has a trash bag there. And uh, he's cleaning up the empties. This is the wreckage that was left behind at the attempted insurrection where white nationalists almost lynched everybody. They almost got them all. They almost lynched everybody, and this was the aftermath of perfectly clean room with uh, a few empties not even beers water empties of water on the floor doesn't even look like they spilled any water maybe a little bit here it beggars belief it beggars belief but but guy like jamar tisby he's just he's playing a role he knows this is all nonsense but there are real people who really believe that that was an insurrection attempt if you can believe that un Real, really funny, ultra funny. And, and I cannot wait to celebrate second April Fool's Day next year on January 6th. It, it's a new January Fool's Day. That's what I'm going to now name it. It's January Fool's Day. And it's not celebrated by everybody because other people celebrate Epiphany, and that's wonderful. But there's also January Fool's Day where people like Jamar have prayer vigils to stand against white Christian nationalism because they almost defeated us that day. And here's a good one. This is a good one. This is a conversation I saw Philip Derrida post. And it's basically a a white woman, and she's wondering if she'll ever uh, get get rid of her whiteness enough to to have a true faith, right? Because if you don't get rid of your whiteness enough to have a true faith— it, it, you know, it, it's very hard to know. Can you even have a true faith? I mean, 
your whiteness pollutes your faith so much. It's like, can I even decolonize my faith? I'm always going to be white. And Kyle here has very serious words for her. And uh, he says, it's just a process. You know, you'll never arrive. You'll never, you'll never make it, but you're, you seek to make it your own. You know, it's kind of like in the Bible where Paul says that. And he's, he's, he's talking to her and says, you know, well, you're, 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 you just got to keep at it, sister. You got to keep at it, sister. Heart, emojis, you know, Ukraine, everything. And I got to be honest, I, I did a video a while back where I said that Kyle Howard was farming your women. That's what he was doing. Like he uses your women for money. And if your husband likes Kyle Howard, then you failed as a husband because he's using her for money. And I, I, I instantly had an epiphany. And I, I, I realized that Kyle Howard and all of these woke people that, uh, that play on the emotions of women in order to make money, because that's what Kyle does. He, he plays on the emotions of women and the motherly maternal instincts of women to, to get money from them. That's what he does. That's what all these woke people do. It's a money-making scheme. Jamar Tisby does it too. He's just a little smarter. But anyway, it, it hit me. It hit me. I've, Kyle Howard is like a Nigerian romance scammer. And the only difference is that the Nigerian romance scammers, they, they trick you into sending them money by pretending that they're somebody else and they pretend that they're in love with you and they need money and then they, you send them money. Kyle Howard, he doesn't do that, but what he does do is he tricks you into thinking you're doing very important theological work. You're doing the work to be an anti-racist and, and, and that's how he tricks you into sending him money. He's a romance scammer. He's a Niger He might as well be from Lagos. Maybe he is. Has anyone checked Kyle Howard's IP addresses? Maybe he's, maybe he's, maybe he's using a VPN. Somebody ought to send him one of those trackers. No, don't do that. Don't send him one of those trackers. But you know, those trackers, they send romance scammers to see where they're clicking from. And inevitably it's always Lagos, Nigeria. <laughs> Maybe, they, maybe they've gotten sophisticated. They know that the romance scam has kind of run its course, and so now they've got to do the, uh, the critical race theory grift. That's the new thing in, from Lagos, Nigeria. There you go. There you go. You know, I've watched a lot of videos about romance scammers, and they actually do justify what they do according to, like, critical race theory categories. Like, there's, there's even a whole, like, movie series, like, kind of like we have, like, mafia movies. Well, they've got, like, romance scammer movies, and it's, like, a whole culture. And uh, one of the ways they justified is how, you know, the white man came and he stole all of our gold and our vibranium. <laughs> he stole our vibranium. And so now we're going to get some of that back from these old white ladies who are just lonely and we're going to empty their 401k. That's how they justify it in, over in Nigeria. But, uh, but yeah, but I almost prefer the romance scammers because at the end of the day, like a lot of times... <laughs> Not everybody, because don't hear me saying everyone who gets scammed out of their money uh, is like this. But a lot of times, you know, there, there'll be people that are married, right? And they'll be married, and they're, like, cheating on their wife with a Nigerian romance scammer. And, and it's like, you know, I don't know. I mean, there seems to be, like, an even exchange here. You're getting attention. You're getting what you want. You know, some uh, guy in, 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 in an internet cafe in Lagos calls you his king. Uh, but you think it's a woman that's uh, really like, you know, they, they usually take like images from porn stars. That's what they do. And you say, and you're so you're getting like to feel like you're like a big and bad guy. All it takes is your 401k. So you, it's like an even exchange when you think about it. I almost prefer the Nigerian scammers over uh, over Kyle because at least the Nigerian scammers kind of like they know that they're doing the wrong thing. Kyle thinks he's actually doing right. Kyle thinks that that this is godly. This is this is this is the Christ honoring thing to do. I almost prefer the Niger the Nigerian romance scammer seems to be more legitimate almost than Kyle Howard. But that's just my opinion. That's just my one man's opinion. There is a lot to talk about this week. There, there's been a lot of stuff coming out about Rachel Den Hollander, which I plan on talking about. Um, it certainly seems to be a credible accusation. That's how we do this, right? It's just a credible accusation, and then. I don't know. There's some, there's some weird stuff there. We'll talk about that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a mess. The SBC is a mess, and especially the, uh, the, the, the sexual abuse situation. Some might call it a grift. The, uh, the sexual abuse situation is what I would call it. That's, that's such a mess, and it, it's such an avoidable mess. And it's like, you know, the whole thing with that, with that, that trailer that uh, the principalities and powers and all that, where it showed a picture of Den Hollander. Every month that passes, that 
is so obviously the correct thing to say about Den Hollander. By the way, the only place to get that 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 trailer in its entirety, because they took it down. If you remember, they took it down and apologized, which was the wrong move, by the way. But the only place to get the full trailer, the original cut with Den Hollander and all of that, uh, that's on my channel. Because at the time I supported it, when everyone was trying to run from it, oh, we must apologize. Even the creators of it, not 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 Knox, but the others, the people that were, you know, payrolling it, they apologized for it. I said you shouldn't apologize. There's nothing wrong. You did nothing wrong. I stood by it then. I stand by it now. We're going to talk about that. There's a lot of other things to talk about, too. We'll, we'll get to it. But I hope you have a good week. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. God bless.